Hey everybody, welcome to another Halloween how-to. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a cheap and easy and absolutely stunning candelabra for Halloween. Now, this is actually kind of the third in a three-part tutorial set, um, and you probably want to take a look at my other videos. I will link to them below to master some of the other techniques you're going to need in order to move on to the construction of your candelabra. The first thing that you're going to need to know how to do is build these um, LED PVC bleeding candles. It's just simply cut PVC, painted, add a tea light candle, cover it in some red wax, and there we go, we've got some bleeding candles. Simple and effective and spooky. Now from there we moved on to learn how to make the candlesticks. Um, it's just adding some more of the exact same PVC with some connector pieces in the shape of a candlestick adding some Halloween embellishments to give it a little bit of extra spookiness, and finishing it off with some of this dollar store beadwork um, to give it that sort of dripping blood effect. Now this is going to be multiplied by a hundred, not quite a hundred, but quite a bit, um, for our candelabra. Now what you're going to need to make the candelabra is pretty much the same PVC, just in a little bit different sizes. Um, so again, make sure you've mastered how to make the candlesticks before you move on to the slightly more complicated candelabra. Now, what I purchased for my candelabra was this chandelier. I got it at the Goodwill store. It was about $20, but you know, if you're lucky, you'll find someone throwing, them, throwing one away, or you'll find it on Craigslist or whatnot. But hopefully you find it just as cheap. And it kind of is going to dictate how you're going to construct your candelabra. Now mine was this silver color, thankfully, because I don't like that sort of gold color that you're going to find most of these are um, in, that sort of brassy gold. Anyway, um, so I took the silver and I used that for the coloring for the um, PVC connector pieces. Now you're also going to need your PVC um, to make the uh, stick of the candelabra. Now mine is actually very tall. You can see that and I did that for a reason because my dining room has a vaulted ceiling and I don't have a chandelier and I've always wanted one. So I figured if I could make my candelabra extra tall it would almost be like a pseudo chandelier. So anyway that was my theory <laughs> and an idea. You might want to make yours a little smaller and you know the height of a normal candelabra maybe but for me this worked. So Basically what I did, it was the exact same technique making the candlesticks. I used the base. It's a three inch base because you want it as wide as possible at the bottom to give yourself a little bit of extra stability. And it's a reducer. It goes from the three inches down to two inches and the two inch is the pipe size. And that's kind of dictated as well by the end of whatever sort of um, chandelier that you find because you're going to need something um, that's going to fit inside your um, PVC. The bottom of this um, chandelier actually has another little loop piece, kind of like was at the top here. So the loop piece is actually hidden inside the PVC, which is just hot glued into place. But it's not just hot glued. Um, it's a little more, I, I needed it to be pretty stable because, you know, it is very top heavy. So I took a piece of wood, just scrap wood from my garage. I painted it this glossy black reason I chose black was because my table had um, you know black tablecloths on it and it was a very dark um, sort of gothic scene so the black just sort of blended into the table and I was fine with that but you'll probably want to do whatever suits you know your own specific circumstances. So I hot glued the PVC um, to the piece of wood and then you know just inserted my other pieces and my connector make sure your connector has a ridge piece inside and again these are all the techniques that i talked about in building the candlesticks so if you're not sure what i'm talking about just make sure you review that video and then again the same another pvc and then another reducer this reducer is actually the exact same um, two inch to one and a half inch um, reducer that i used on the candlestick except flipped around and I did that because that's what I needed for the shape of the bottom of the chandelier. So what I've also done is I filled in the bottom section with some pea gravel. And that's just going to give a lot of weight to the base because otherwise it would be very top heavy. And then I took the chain that I clipped off the top 
and I attached it to the loop that was on the bottom of the chandelier and I draped it inside the pipe. And then I filled that with expanding foam so that foam will kind of um, work its way inside all of that chain, kind of lock it into place. And then I hot glued it at the top, stuck it down. So hopefully, I mean, this is not moving, it's not going anywhere. I don't have any worries that it's gonna fall apart or get knocked over. But you know, you kind of got to tweak it depending on your circumstances and whatever chandelier that you find. The other modification that you're gonna need to do for the chandelier is this one had some pretty ugly like um, uh, shades on it. So I, of course, removed the shades. It also had you know a candle, you know, electric uh, light in here, which I removed. Originally, I had removed this entire piece, the structure, and there's a little piece of metal here that I clipped off um, because I was going to use a little short candle. But then I thought that short candle is going to be very unstable too and could fall off, so I put this back on. Just keep this in mind. Just, again, this is just general concepts for you to keep in mind with whatever you are building because you want yours. So obviously, it's gonna, you're going to have to work with whatever you, whatever you find. But I ended up having to make these tall candles that will fit over the um, little chandelier piece here. So, you know, the inside of the candle is hollow except for that little piece of styrofoam or um, pipe foam, insulation foam that's holding the top. So this will just slide right over that piece and it's not going anywhere. So if this shakes, if somebody hits it, knocks it over, that candlestick or that candle is not gonna fall. And that's what I was looking for for that. So let's go ahead and just real quickly put them all up. And you're gonna need eight of these if you have an eight tier candelabra, I guess, or a candle chandelier, there we go. Like I do, but of course, you know, your mileage may vary, as I keep saying. Now, let's see, okay, we're getting closer. Now, you could stop here, you've got your bloody candelabra, but it is really plain. So I was doing my sort of Dracula vampire theme. So I used these dollar store beads. They come six to a pack. I used five packs of these, so roughly 30 strands of these dollar store beads just to add decoration. Now, these came as necklaces, basically. So I just took some scissors, snipped it, and I have a strand to work with. For a few of them, I clipped them into even smaller strands, and I'll show you what I did with those in a minute, which is just basically half of this strand. Anyway, take the strand, just run a simple little knot through it, and you don't want to be exact. You don't want it exactly in the center because you don't want um, the ends to be um, the same length. You want it to kind of just be random. So take that, just knot it right over the top, and let it hang down. I'm going to do that twice, once for each side, and that's going to give you four strands hanging down off each candle. Now, when I did the candlesticks, I actually did um, three strands, so there were six um, beads draping. But, you know, when you're working with your candelabra, you're going to be having eight of these. It gets to be a visual mess, so that's why I reduced it a little bit. To four. Now, I'm not too thrilled with the lengths of these. They are awfully similar here. So to adjust it is actually very easy. You just sort of pull one edge of your beading. That's a little bit better. It's not perfect, but I'm gonna leave it for now just so we can move on. I also specifically picked a chandelier that had this extra detail on it, um, some extra hooking that I can drape things on. Originally, my plan was to find like black beads and like clear crystals to you know hang like a big gothic chandelier might look like. Um, but I could not find that. So that's actually what um, moved me into the whole Dracula theme because I found the red beads and the red looks so good with the black and the silver. So, you know, I decided to do Dracula and make the bleeding candles and blood just sort of fills these trays and water falls off. And when you have the lights above, you know, I would, I would dim them, but with just the slightest dim lights coming from the top, it really shines off of these red beads and they just sort of glow this intense red. It's actually absolutely beautiful. So we are going to go ahead and finish putting on these 
30 or so strands. Um, and again, random is key. You want them all to look a little bit different, a little bit different lengths. So I am going to do that real quick and then I will touch base with you here in a moment once I've got these all up, huh? Okay, I'm just putting on the last couple of strands around my candles and you can see it is really filled out. Now, the height on this candlestick, candelabra, is actually kind of good because you know, the candles are way up high so I can still see through it and even though this stuff is draping down you know, if somebody's on the table on that far side, I can still see through the beading and see them and you could have a conversation still. So I'm not too worried about that. Now I've gone ahead and also added the um, draping on the hooks, you know, the inside detail. So it gives it a lot of dimension. I mean, there's several layers of beads as you look through it. And what I've done too is I've kept a couple of them all, you know, I've knotted it very close to the top so that it drapes all the way down to the bottom and then I put an extra layer of beading here just to give it like a little pool of blood effect, which I thought was kind of neat. The last um, thing I need to do is take these small ones and I'm just going to loop them through my top um, loop there <laughs> so that it looks like a full waterfall of blood coming off the top of the candelabra. Now, I'll also take a few of these little ones and just fill in the top tray so that it looks very full of blood. You don't want that <laughs> draping out. All right, so there we go. Um, some of these need to be just adjust it a little bit there. All right, so now we have a full waterfall effect around the entire candelabra. The last thing to do is just finish off the top. Now, in previous years, I've used these little blackbirds that you know kind of went with my literary theme. I did a video on my Dead Girl and Poe bust because I was kind of making a whole theme around him one year. So he's kind of neat. I've got a little um, DIY project on a poster that you can print out. Um, anyway, be sure to check that out. It's one of my other videos. I'll link to it below too and um, enjoy. But we're not going to do that this year. Um, this year, and I don't know why I didn't think to do this the last year either, we are going to do bats because, you know, it's a vampire theme. So I'm trying to stick, stick to the bats a little bit more. Now these are just um, some decorations that I got from the dollar store. All right, we'll leave that there. So... I am just going to glue a couple of these together. Um, oops, wrong way. On the top here. So that, whoops, <laughs> that we have a little bit of a bat theme. So let's go ahead and see if we can get that done right now. I'm just using some craft glue. Hopefully this will work. If it doesn't, then I always have the hot glue. Of course, my glue bottle doesn't want to come out. I should probably use it more than once a year, huh? But let's go ahead and see if we can just get it enough to work for now. Come on. All right. <laughs> you can clearly tell I don't plan these things thoroughly in advance. I just sort of do them on the fly. Anyway, let's see if this will work. I am just gonna glue these two together. Actually, I think the first year I did this, I tried doing sp a spider up there. That didn't work out too well either. That's why I ended up just going with a bird. I think it was more of a compromise. Because I wanted to do the spiders, you know, I did the spiders on the candlesticks. And then I put some random spiders all along the table because what do you want to look at while you're eating if not spiders? I don't know. Anyway, I'm not thrilled about the giant smiley face on this bats, but you know, I actually bought these for a different project and it didn't actually work out for the project I wanted it for. Um, so it's just sort of in my stack of stuff to do something with maybe. 
There we go. And that's what I'm going to do with it now. <laughs> so there we go. That's my candelabra. Let me go ahead and pull this camera up, give you a little bit of a closer view, different perspective, because I know with all this background going on, it's probably a little hard to see some of the detail. But I'm really impressed with the way it turned out. I really like it a lot. I hope you do too. So um, let's take another look. All right, so what did you think? Now, it's really hard to convey here in my study um, with the completely wrong lighting, how beautiful this is in the proper lighting. In a dim atmosphere, when there's some light shining down on these, these cheap dollar store beads really do glisten like fire. And, you know, I just can't duplicate that with a camera. So sorry about that, but don't just take my word for it. Build one for yourself, check it out. Let me know how that works for you. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you have learned something between my three videos with the um, candles and my candlesticks and my candelabra. I really had a good time building them. Hope you had a good time watching and got some ideas to make your Halloween just a little more spooky. Anyway, that's it for today. So take care, everyone. Happy haunting, and I'll see you around.